Hello there, welcome along. It's the sweet spot, your regular Tuesday portion of golf tipping and a look back on what happened the previous week with Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer. Two tournaments to reflect on, two tournaments to look forward to this week. Hopefully, plenty of decent betting value. Uh, Steve, before we look ahead to what we've got, how are you keeping? In good spirits? I'm all right, I'm all right. I mean, I obviously got over what happened last week now. I was combusting with rage last week about Will Besseling not being my number one selection because, you know, I always have an each-way double, quite a significant each-way double on my two number one selections. So having Besseling as number two rather than, um, you know, Hurley Long. We had a two-man staking plan last week. Hurley Long, the 250-to-1 shot, was the number one. Will Besseling was number two. So, yeah, my main fury from last week was not having Besseling as number one because it would have been a lovely Besseling-Fitzpatrick each-way double, which would have returned a a pretty penny. Um, I think some people did have that double. I see that in the YouTube uh, comment section, you had that. I'm very pleased you had it. And we've we've also had Graham Harris have that. Graham Harris, um, very pleased with Graham Harris. So, yeah, angry with myself, but other, other people had the gumption to uh, to have the bestling Fitzpatrick as well as the long Fitzpatrick, and, and well done to them. Graham's gumption paid off. Don't forget, if you like the show, we'd love you to click that thumbs up. Leave some comments. Let us know who you fancy this week. Um, before we look at who Steve fancies this week, we'll touch upon the uh, events that he did refer to there. So we had the Austrian Open. Um, it looked horrifically cold. They were togged out in all sorts. I think the winner was wearing two hats. That was uh, John Catlin, who's made it three wins from 13 European starts. He won a prolonged playoff. I must admit, I did back him. Um, and going into the playoffs, Steve, they were playing this par 3-18th, weren't they? And I think they played it thrice, didn't they? And uh, no one really managed to get there. And I was getting all... You know what it's like in playoffs. They're the most tense thing, aren't they? And I'm a pretty pessimistic person. I always had it in my head that it would just go wrong. It was definitely going to go wrong. But lo and behold, it was absolutely... I've got to say it was brilliant. I feel sorry for Maximilian Kiefer, but he stuck his tee shot into the water, went to the drop zone, chipped it onto the green, spun it back into the water, went to the drop zone, spun it back in the water and ended up taking nine. It was oh, it was so nice not to have to sweat to, to win. But um, this Catlin's interesting, isn't he? Because he's just a winning machine, isn't he? Yeah, they, they played it five times in the playoff. Five times, I mean, you, you, me. And you have to, Ma- Max Kiefer's never won a European Tour event. He played in a playoff that he lost at the ninth extra hole in 2013 against Rafael Jacqueline. So he's had two epic playoffs now. And you see how much it means to him. He's got these old mad eyes, mad Max, you could call him. You know, really intense character, really passionate. And um, he played well in the playoff. You know, he, he, he you know, he held that long birdie part on the third playoff. I must have thought he'd got the job done. And then, um, yeah, Catlin scrambled from the full, from the bunk on the fourth extra hole. And I think that absolutely broke broke Kiefer from there. So, um, yeah, Catlin's won three three European Tour wins in, in eight months. And he also won four times on the Asian Tour before that. So he's a, he's a real grinder. He's only 30 years old. Doesn't hit it very far, but a great short game. And, um, yeah, he's obviously got a good temperament. He's, he's an unflashy player that just won't go away. Um, what was so, going on with his hat, Steve? Was it a separate cap with like a beanie over the top, or was it an integrated sort of two-in-one hybrid hat? It's a good question. I sometimes adopt that in, in, in the shed. I sometimes have the cap with a with a hat over the top, with a with a um, with a sort of a woolly hat over the top. It, it, it can work out well. I'm not sure. I'd be surprised if he's integrating. Yeah, they, yeah. They, these these fellas are rich enough and have enough sponsors around them to to get proper equipment. So yeah, I would. I would I would anticipate that that is actually a a, um, a proper device that he's he's been using there. Mm, I, so I don't like the look of it. He, 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 I mean, he, no, he looked ridiculous, ridiculous, didn't he? Yeah, he looked like, he looked like Jim, the lead singer from Jamiroquai, didn't he, or something? So great big thing. Oh, he, he, Just he needed did. a couple of feathers sticking out of it to complete the effect. But, yeah, he's a player to watch out for because he knows how to win. Over in America, it was the heritage. And a player who certainly knows how to win, uh, Stuart Sink, at the ripe old age of 47, absolutely turned it into a procession. He ruined that. He, he, I, I mean, you know, fair play to him. He did what he had to do. But he kind of ruined what otherwise would have been one of the most fascinating tournaments going because he, he, he shot two rounds of eight under, stormed into a massive lead and just never relinquished it, did he? I mean, you, you had to take your hat off to the old boy. But, I mean, it, it, it didn't make for compelling viewing particularly, did it? No, no. I mean, that is a course that uh, you know, experienced veterans can thrive on. I mean, Stuart Sink was 12th in the Masters the previous week. He's a 
a two, it was a two-time heritage winner. It's now a three-time heritage winner. So it's 150 to one. I probably deserve a sort of public flogging for for, for missing that one. He, he, yeah, oh, really? Stuart Sing, yeah, Stuart Singer, 150 to one. It was just, it was the wrong cross, wasn't it? I, I, I you know, I'm di- really disappointed myself for, for not getting involved in that. Um, and Colin Morikawa, you know, really disappointing final round performance. I, going into the final round, you say it was all over. I thought Morikawa was going to apply a bit of pressure. You know, world number four. You know, he, he birded the first hole to, to, to reduce the gap to four shots and really disappointed for Morikawa from there. He, he, he bogeyed the second hole, made six at the second hole, and, and, it, and it was all over from there. So, um, yeah, all credit to Stuart Singh, one of the nice guys. Had his son on the bag. You must enjoy watching that. Yes, yeah, so that was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you've been quite hard on yourself saying that you should, you should be publicly flogged. I mean, if I was walking through Weymouth Towns, do you have like a town square or something in Weymouth? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we do. And yeah. I saw you tethered to a lamppost with some bloke flogging you and a crowd round you. And someone said, "What? What? What was his crime?" They said, "Well, he didn't tip Stuart Sinker 150 to one for the heritage." I, I think that was a bit harsh. No, I'd be welcome. I'd be beckoning you on to say more, <laughs> more. You know, I, I, I'm really angry with myself. I made two really bad decisions last week. That was one of them. And then not having Will Bestling as my number one was a yeah. Cardinal sin. Yeah, the Hurley, yeah, Hurley lines get so excited about Hurley lines. He was, he was leading through seven holes. He was, yeah, I know. Three under par with seven holes. And then he, he was in contention with three holes to go after in round two. You, you know how he finished round two, don't you? He, yes, he, I do. He finished yeah, round it's two. He's in, yeah. he's in 20th place. Yeah. He's in 20th place. He's, he's, he's pushing the leaders. Yeah, the, the each way, each way dream still well on. Finishes triple bogey, par, double bogey to miss the cut by a shot. I mean, you just cannot script that kind of stuff no i know when he was going well and we texted each other didn't we but if you remember we said that it's hurley days and there's a long way to go so this is it this and is so it, it yeah. proved didn't no, it? no 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 it's, it's fine margins isn't it you have to you have, yeah you, i hope you want a pretty penny from the Besseling Fitzpatrick. it was all right yeah was it yeah it was okay it was it was a um, nice little double that i mean i, I, I never like, as you know i don't like backing fitz Jill, fitzpatrick um, I just think he's a bit flimsy, but when he gets going, he's all right, isn't he? And he dropped a shot early on Sunday, but recovered to comfortably get in the places. So that was good. But I was looking at Sink, Steve. He's played over 600 tournaments on, on, uh, on events on tour, and he's had he's got 100 top tens. That's a top ten, one in six. That's pretty good going, isn't it? He's made 47 million dollars. So, you know, you know the old game we used to play. Who would you rather be, you or dot dot dot? Who would you rather be, you or Stuart Sink? Oh, that's a ridiculous question. <laughs> of course, I'd rather be Stuart C. He, he's I mean, won he's done well for himself, championship. He? He's won our Open Championship. Yeah. He's got the, he's, his name's on the Claret Jug. You know, he's, he, when he's lying in his deathbed, he, he can say, my name's on the Claret Jug, and he'll be there for the next 10,000 years. Yeah. He seems nice enough fella, doesn't he, as well? Oh, yeah, he, he is. He's one of the good guys. Yeah, no, no. If I was a neutral watching that, I'd be really pleased with Stuart Singh. You know, he's been through the mill. You know, his wife's had a lot of health problems. Um, oh. yeah, I, I, yeah, I've got a lot of time for Stuart Singh as a, as a character. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about some of the also rands in America. Steve, anyone impress you or not remotely impress you? Um, the, the two to take from the race, well, we, we mustn't leave the Austrian Open without talking about Nikolai Hogard. It was so pleased to see, I was so pleased to see Nikolai Hogard play. Well. Normally gets up staged by his brother, you know. You, know, you you got a few brothers, didn't you, Bruce? You must mm. have had a sibling rivalry as you grow up, and obviously uh, you've left them all behind now in your role as the top You know, Rasmus and Nikolai. Nikolai had the edge early doors. Rasmus has gone on and um, won a couple of European Tour events. Nikolai has really been struggling, but he finished seventh last week with a really good final round. It says his long game's been good, hasn't been holding many putts. So, yeah, uh, Nikolai Hogar back on the radar massively. And then in... Um, in the heritage, I thought Corey Connors again. He's just so consistent. Mm. From the 2020 Masters onwards, he's posted nine top 20s in 12 starts. Uh, Connors finished fourth on Sunday, ensconced in the world's top 50 now. So, um, yeah, if he can just improve his putting a bit, then Connors could go further up those world rankings. He's very good, isn't he? Yeah, interesting. OK, Steve, thank you very much indeed. Let's move on to this week. It's a slightly strange week, isn't it? We've got a European event in uh, the Canary Islands, which we'll do first. And then we've got that rather weird pairs event in in America, which kind of intrigues me, but I, I'm not sure whether it's the greatest betting medium of all time. We'll find out. But first of all, let's look at the European Tour events. The Grand Canaria, Lopez San Open. Um, rough guide to the best prices. Uh, Antoine Rosner around about 16 to 1. Sam Horsfield, 18s. Matthias Schwab, 20s. Andy Sullivan, 20s. Cabrera Bello, 22s. Kitty Armour's in there at 25s. John Catlin's in there at 30s. Oh, he could be interesting. How many selections have you got, Steve? Four! That's a good one. Someone complained the other day that your four was a little bit low-key, but that was, that was a much that. better yeah, one. I tried, yeah. 
try my best. I try my best. I, I can't mm. see him still doing that in five or six years' time with any sort of gusto, but I'm, I'll, I'll, Why not? I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. These these things wear thin, don't they? But no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you and I have been trotting out the same pathetic in jokes for years. I'm sure the the bellowed four has got a life, a lot of life left in it. Okay. Steve, um, very unusually short course this, isn't it? I believe it's the sort mm. of course that even I might be able to reach some of the par fours into. Absolutely, six thousand five hundred three yards, par seventy, places seventy one for the members. Only three par fives three reachable par fours um so yeah we should be in for a very low scoring week at uh, melanera's golf gran canaria it can um, blow down there can't it do you know well this is it weather? this is it i mean I've, I've been a regular in the canary islands through the years and we've got a three week stint in the canary islands we're off to tenerife next week Ooh, um and uh, yeah we've got some breezy afternoons this week this course has only been open since 2006 it was upgraded in 2019 it's an inland front nine but you're right the back nine very very exposed right along the cliff tops amazing views of the marina below um and we've don't, got, i'm um, dying to go back to go oh, love oh, the this, canaries don't you this will whet your appetite for the canaries yeah yeah no, i'm a huge fan of the canaries i used to, as i say i used to well, as, as a single man i used to go there a, a fair bit but um the wife says it's too windy so you know the canary islands would drop from our list because she doesn't like the winds but um i think she's being ultra critical there i'm a big, big fan of the canary islands and uh yeah, but this the, the key component of this course that we must uh, mention upon is it's got paspalum grass because it's quite a new a new course paspalum is all the rage with, with, with the new courses you know, quite a sticky grass quite an unusual grass so we haven't um we don't have many events on paspalum and grass so yeah we're going to get calm mornings and, and breezy afternoons at melanera's golf okay uh without further ado who's your main select well a little bit of a do because you've got to take a swig of diet coke it's a bit early to be drinking that diet coke isn't it, it takes what time a... do you have your first pan of it normally i've had a couple to, to fire me up this morning i mean I, I always wake up with a very very dry mouth and it takes a lot of a lot of um liquid to, 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 to moisten it by about noon i usually get there so um, yeah do, i do apologize for that's for right how many cans there. do you have a day of it still three or four yeah three or four i know they're not good i know they've got some some ingredient everyone tells me is going to kill me aspartum is that it Spartan. god knows i don't want to get a legal case on the go but yeah i've heard of spartan it's not very good i think you're um, a good ad for diet uh, for coke zero you might even get a deal at something oh no it's diet coke isn't it i prefer diet coke, coke zero right. but anyway sorry that was way too much to do who are you going to uh, put up first <laughs> Number one is Double K, Kurt Kitayama, the big hit in Californian. Uh, he's battled his way back into the world's top 100. He made a very fast start at 2021 on the European Tour. 35th in Abu Dhabi, 20th in Dubai, 12th in Saudi Arabia, 9th in Qatar, 2nd in the Kenya Open. Very progressive. And then 15th in Austria last week, where he closed with a 69. Uh, so Kitayama's been threatening his third European Tour title. And his previous two victories... Highlight his suitability to this assignment. He won the Mauritius Open at the end of 2018. So that's an island venue, a track with similarities to this one. And then he won the Oman Open in 2019, which has that Paspalum grass I've always, already mentioned. There's not many of them. Uh, Oman Open, breezy location, Paspalum grass. Points to a good performance this week. I think Ketiyama will fall in love with this course. He was 12th in the Saudi International. That's the last event played on Paspalum. And that Kenya Open second... I think that counts for plenty as well, because you mentioned the drivable par fours. There's loads of drivable par fours in, in, in the, that Kenya venue. Uh, three to gun out in Grand, Grand Canaria this week. So, yeah, well, I think we get, might get back to back Californian winners on European tour. Catlin's a Californian. Kitty Armour is too. OK, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, next best. Next best is Antoine Rosner. I can't go into battle without my, my little friend Antoine Rosner. He was a hero for us in the Qatar Masters a month ago. He was on the wrong side of the draw in Qatar. Still managed to win. He was third in the betting for that Qatar Masters. Probably should have been favourite. I think he definitely deserves to be favourite this week. He's won two of his last seven events. He's finished in the top 40 in his last 14 events. Really, really consistent now. Um, and after that Qatar triumph, jetted over to the WGC match play. You couldn't expect much more over there on his debut. You know, in, in, you know, in with all the big guns for the first time. And um, two amazing scouts. He beat Bryson DeChambeau in his, his first match. And then he also beat Si Woo Kim. That's, that's, that's two amazing victories. Unlucky not to progress from that group. So Ross has gone up a level. Uh, he won a Challenge Tour event in Spain in 2019. He was third in the Andalusia Masters last year. He was second in the 2018 Open to Portugal. So likes his, likes his part of the world. And uh, the Mauritius Open, we mentioned that. He was a playoff loser in the Mauritius Open in 2019. Uh, so, yeah, I think Rosner could make it three wins from nine starts this week. Wow. Two very strong cases, I must say, Steve. 
it almost feels like that will do me. I've got a proper portfolio, but we're going to have a couple of supplementary side orders, are we? We are, because we're concentrating on this event and we haven't got much many fancies in the other one. So we're going to have a four-pronged attack. Callum Hill is our third one, a 26-year-old Scotsman. Callum Hill really impressed me of late. Uh, we knew he was good because he won three times on the Challenge Tour. Now he's starting to show it in the higher grade. And he was fourth in the Saudi International in February. That's a massive piece of form. It was on the Paspalum grass that I, I keep banging on about. But only Dustin Johnson, Tony Finau and Justin Rose beat him in that Saudi International. It was a top-class field. And last time out, he played the Kenya doubleheader. He finished eighth in the Kenya Open and third in the Savannah Classic. So Hill is full of form. Maiden victory seems close. And a caddy switch has helped him. Phil Morby, Phil Wobbly Morby. He came onto the scene um, before the Saudi International. So their first event was that Saudi International. Experienced caddy. He was on Ian Woosnam's bag when he won the Masters. They instantly clicked. Callum had his uh, brother on the bag prior to that. His brother has accepted that, you know, it, it, Callum needed a pro caddy to further his career. He's accepted the decision. Um, and I think this could be their breakthrough week together, uh, Hill and Morby. Um, and the final one, a much, much bigger price, is Pep Angles. One of your oh, favourite. Pep, Pep Angles. Angles. Power pack Spaniard. Great record of success in his home country. Seems to raise his game in Spain. He won a challenge draw event in Spain in November. Uh, he's only had three starts on the European Tour this year. Two of them have been decent enough. Eighth place in Kenya, 33rd last week in Austria. Closed with a 68. Only nine players in the field better that score on Sunday. We were on Pep Angles when he finished runner-up in the Open to Portugal uh, last year. You know, that's another noteworthy piece of form. He's got a good record in the Rocco Forte Open, which is played along the, uh, the coastline in Sicily. You know, there's similarities uh, there. He likes island golf, not the Republic of Ireland. He yeah. likes Island golf. Okay, excellent. Were you uh, humming and hawing between him and one other player for that final selection? No, I was humming and hawing over whether to have a very aggressive, bold, expensive five-pronged attack with Sam Horsfield in there as well. Uh, Sam Horsfield is the is would be too the many gut fabs buster. that would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't like. You know, I like to have a you know, viable staking plan, as I call it, for the working man. You know, I, I, my audience is the working man. And um, yeah, if I throw Sam Allsfield in there, they've got to really, you know, do some extra shifts to pay for those that, that stake in plan, haven't they? So um, it's not happening. OK, so you were going to go to Horsfield, but then you decided you're loving angles instead. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Pep Angles is 125 to one. He might even be better. I'm only looking at one firm. So that's good, isn't it? Uh, I could see you were brewing something there. Thanks. You had that yeah, that's smirk. You were really green, quite excited. Yeah. About that. I was. I, didn't, I, I was a bit disappointed with the delivery, but never mind. Um, Steve, one thing I was going to ask about is with the afternoon wins, is there going to be a draw bias here? And if people are betting on the first round leader market, should they be very much focused on the morning starters? The first question, no. The second question, yes. Yeah, it's going to be the same same conditions each day. Calm mornings, breezy afternoons. But yeah, yeah, I'd be surprised if the, the first round leader is not a morning starter. OK, brilliant. Anything else to add on that event? Or should we move across to New Orleans? I think we should go to New Orleans. OK, right then. So it's the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. It's a pairs event. That's about all I know. There's, that, there's tons of the blighters. This absolutely enormous field. But I'm completely in the dark about the format. So fill us in on that first. We've got 80 teams of two. So, yeah, you've got 160 players going to post. TPC, Louisiana, Avondale, Louisiana, 7,425 yards past 72. Designed by Pete Dye in 2003. Made its PGA Tour debut in 2005. We've had a Zurich Classic individual event uh, until 2017 when they needed to spice it up. The Zurich Classic wasn't really attracting many stars. The pairs event made it much more interesting. Uh, so we've only had three of them. We didn't How does it work? Uh, so, sorry, you've got uh, best ball um, rounds one and three, alternate shot rounds two and four. So, so, um, so, yeah. do they, so hang on, they all tee off on the best ball. They all play their own ball on the, on the, uh, the rounds one and three. So, no, so, so they all tee off. There's four tee shots, isn't there, yeah? Or, they, or... they all play their own ball in rounds one and three, yeah, and then whatever their best score at. Oh, that better score, them. better yeah, ball. Yeah, right. I've yeah, got yeah. you. And, and then, then after that, they tee off alternately and then take shots alternately, yeah? Uh, no, no, just pure alternate shot. You know, one player drives, next player hits, next player hits. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is with that, I always wondered whether if you hold the putt on the previous hold, does the other fella tee off at the next one? That's not that they they alternate the tee shots, don't they? Uh, mustn't get muddled up with greensmiths where they both drive 
and then they go from no, there. No, no, I'm not I'll... saying that. I'm just saying that player A, right, the, the favourites are Rahm and Palmer. At the first hole, Rahm will drive, yeah? At the yeah. second hole, Palmer will drive. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, it's, but it does, so, in other words, what I'm saying is the alternate, it doesn't matter who's hold the winning, the hold the putt at the previous hole, does it? It's, no, it's no, alternate no, no, drives no. and then alternate shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, I think you're right there. That's yeah. complicated. That a treat. Yeah. That was like that was like Graham Taylor's team talk to Nigel Clough, wasn't it? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, it's it's all a bit of, of fun, and um, yeah, I don't think it's one you're you're going to be getting too stuck in on in terms of betting, is it? We should have a look at the market first, actually, before we find out who you're. What, I think it's. A, oh no, we'll find out how many selections in a minute. But um, roughly speaking, Ram and Palmer favourites at fifteen to two. Then you've got Chauffelet and Cantlay at 8-1. to one. I mean, why put the two slowest golfers in the world together? I've got no idea. They should probably start on Wednesday in order to be able to ensure they complete their round. Smith, I presume that's Cameron Smith and Leishman, an all-Aussie pair in the 12s. You've got Watson and Scheffler at 14s. Morikama and Wolf at 16s. Finnau and Champ at 16s. 20s bar. You've got all sorts of weird and wonderful combinations. Who's your favourite combination, Steve? You've been down and thought, wow, that's an interesting pairing. Um, I'll tell you Not what, this is about the one you want to win, but just the sort of mad one. Um, I think Victor Ovden and Christopher Ventura will have a lot of fun out there. I know what you're saying. There are some bemusing ones on there, aren't there? Um, Charlie Hoffman and Nick Watney was one for the, the old connoisseurs. You know, <laughs> two names I've, I've followed for about 20 years. Um, yeah, I was pleased to see them. I think they'll have a lot of fun out there, actually. But um, yeah, I thought a... there was a couple of I thought there was a couple of uh, people who were punching out there to use sort of you know <laughs> dating parlance. And I thought Ventura <laughs> was one. I thought it was very lucky to hook up with with Hovland. That's a yeah. great partnership for well, him, he, isn't it? He's gone right off the boil, Ventura. It's terrible timing for him because they would have agreed to this partnership ages ago when he was absolutely buzzing. And you know that would have been a, a hot partnership a few months back. But Ventura sadly lost his form. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you would have said that about Ryan Palmer in 2019, though, wouldn't you? He was punching. You know, sometimes it's sometimes those partnerships work because you need a natural leader, you know, a team leader. Um, you know, when you're all squabbling over strategy, if you've got like similar players of similar status, you know, it, it doesn't work quite as well, I don't think. Hmm. OK, how many selections? I've just got one. Oh, I mean, that's unprecedented. But I've OK. I've just got one. I've just got why, one. I, why I, I, is that? Because I was just found it so easy to pick holes in, in in the others you know i did i didn't want to just have one i just was going you know i did my sort of x factor style uh select selection process and just kept whittling and whittling and whittling and the whittling just never stopped and it was just one team that i couldn't get off the list so um yeah I, i'm quite pleased with that you know i, I don't yeah, it's quite exciting yeah it is <laughs> so there's one basket with one egg in which <laughs> basket is it it is the Scotty Sheffer and Bubba Watson basket. Ooh, that's uh, a feisty old combo, that, isn't it? It is, it is. Very, yeah, very similar characters. I think they're going to gel really well this week. There's hardly any wind forecast. We must mention this. Hardly any wind forecast this week. I think the course is going to play very easy. Uh, yeah, TBC Luan, Louisiana is there to be attacked, and these two can destroy it. Uh, Watson is a course winner. He won the Zurich Classic in 2011. Uh, he's made the cut in all three of the pairs events there. Um, with weaker partners than he's got now. He's got an informed Scotty Scheffler on his side now. It, he was fifth. Watson was fifth in the 2017 Zurich uh, alongside JB Holmes, um, which is not a great partner. He was 28th in 2018 with Matt Kuchar. That's probably the best partner he's had. And he was 34th last year with Holmes again. This time he gets an upgrade. He gets an informed Scotty Scheffler. As I say, similar characters, both aggressive birdie hunters. I think they'll bond well. Watson can play that captain's role that I was talking about. Yeah, he's a two-time Masters champion, much more experienced player. Scheffler will not mind that. You know, Scheffler will, will happily play the deputy. Watson's found some form. He won his group in the WGC match play, uh, lost to an inspired Brian Harmon. We talked about the Brian Harmon birdie blast, which uh, which which knocked Watson out of the of the match play. Then Watson went to the Masters, which always seems to boost his confidence. You know, Watson's a sort of fragile fragile character mentally. He loves turning up with his green jacket at the Masters, going to the Champions Dinner, watching the ceremonial tee shots. He finished 26th there. Big boost, I think, for him. Scheffler was runner-up in that WGC match play we mentioned. He was 18th in the Masters, arguably the best maiden on the PGA Tour. He's up to world number 21, hungry for silverware. You know, he won't be messing around. He's, he's desperate to lift some trophies. So I think you've got a focus team here, and the best combo by far, I think. The only thing is, Steve, with Bubba, 
I mean, he's notorious for blaming his caddy, isn't he? Every time he, he misses a putt, he glares at his caddy. If, if he tries that with Sheffield, it could demoralise the poor chap, couldn't it? Yeah, I, I think Bob has played enough team golf to know know how to approach these things now. You know, he, he plays in every team event. You know, he, he likes a QBE shootout. I think I think they're going to bond really well. But Bubba, Bubba does shout at his caddy, but he's got a great relationship. Ted Scott, you know, they're, 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 they're great buddies. You know, they're... they're and he seems to have chilled out a bit since he's become a um, a dad. You know, he's adopted a couple of kids, and um, you know, the, the the modern Bubba is a little bit more chilled out. I don't think we're going to see any histrionics. I think they're going to bond really well these two. Um, okay. And as I say, I, every other every other partnership I could pick holes in. I mean, if if you the biggest criticism of these two is were they hold enough putts? But traditionally, the Zurich Classic's been all about greens and regulation. Every winner of the Zurich Classic, when it was an individual event, it was just GIR, GIR, GIR. So these two are going to find so many greens and set up so many chances. Um, yeah, 14 to 1, I'd make them shorter than that. OK, thanks. I've, my eye was drawn to the uh, feisty English duo, Danny Willett and Tyrrell Hatton. I mean, that could either be brilliant or they could be swing clubs at each other, couldn't they? Exactly. Who's your team captain there? You know, Willett's a Masters champion. Hatton is much higher in the world rankings now. I think, you know, there, there could be a lot of um, spiciness there. Things. Are, yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. Too much, too much angst. I suppose Chauffle and Cantley, although brutally slow, the pair of them, they've probably got what you might call in racing par parlance a kind of class edge, haven't they? I mean, you know, they are sort of pretty much just about still members of the elite, aren't they? And, uh, you know, could they romp to victory? 2019 President's Cup played played with each other for four four consecutive sessions. Won two matches, lost two matches. Uh, Cartney's gone right off the ball. Two events you'd expect him to play well in. Masters, Heritage, miscut in both. Shefale, obviously, first time out since the Augusta disaster at the 16th hole. Um, couldn't have him at that prize. I'm sorry. I'm so okay. sorry. I can't That's get That's right. More, no, you don't have to apologise. I, I haven't backed. I haven't backed anyone. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just do what you just say. What What do you say about the fads? Um, John Rahm and Ryan Palmer. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. It could go well. I just wonder whether that. Yeah, you know, they were thrown together in 2019. Didn't yeah? You know, didn't really know each other that well, and you know, it was it was a magical experience. I don't know whether they. Yeah, you know, I don't know whether they can re recreate that magic two years later. Um, uh, Ram's been very busy with the baby, and so after the Masters, he would have down tools back to the ba back to the baby uh, grindstone. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely too short, definitely too short. Now the only others that tempted me were Billy Horschel and Sam Burns. Billy Horschel's won this event with Scott Piercy. Sam Burns playing in his home state this week, uh, almost won the Genesis not that long ago. Um, Twenty-five to one. They were tempting, but. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, why is Billy Horshaw ditch Scott Piercy? Scott Piercy be on the ground, sort of trying to pin him up against the wall, saying, well, you know, what's going on, Billy? Um, Cameron Smith, Mark Leishman, great friends, dangerous. OK. If but just a, the one. If you I... want a big price outsider, if you're desperate for another one, you want a big price outsider, try Justin Sir and Doug Gim. Justin Sir's brilliant. Doug Gim is all right. So they could go well at a big price. OK, but you're just sticking with one. Right, then, let's recap your selections. This won't take long. In the Grand Canaria, I can't remember that other word. It's gone off. Lopezan. Lopezan. Yeah. OK, who are your selections there? Kurt Kitayama, Antoine Rosner, Callum Hill and Pep Angles. And in the Zurich Classic of New Orleans? Scotty Sheffer and Bubba Watson. OK, thanks, Steve. Uh, any other news? Is the, is the hair still bursting out of that Tiger Woods baseball cap? Or have you managed to have a trim yet? No, I've got another nine days. I've got an appointment now, but it's another nine days. So, yeah, one more podcast before I can uh, take the hat off, really. Blimey. Uh, did you not have a walk-in barber around where you are? The one that I'm loyal to. The wife says I'm too loyal to him because, um, yeah, I've been going to the same barber since I was knee-high to the grasshopper. Um, he, he he just just chock-full, chock-full. Okay. People people love him because it's, it's, it's a good old-fashioned barber. You know, he's got some good banter as well. It's, it's, it, you know, he could give me a rubbish haircut and I still go there just for the... Is it so old fashioned that he offers you something for the weekends? So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so old fashioned you've got copies of Playboy in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, and what about pubs? Have you managed to have a tincture yet since the yes. uh, lockdown was eased? Yes, I've been in three public house sessions since we last spoke. Yeah, yeah, I've made sure of that. It's just great to be back, isn't it? Uh, what were you drinking? Real? You're quite a real ale fan, aren't you? I did have some landlord, yeah, Timothy Taylor's land landlord. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I just love Heineken and well, I love them all, you know, you know, my 
you know, my penchant for a relaxing beer garden. Yeah, in, instantly good for the soul, aren't they? When you when you see, yeah, it's been it's been sunny again now, hasn't it? The sun's mm. coming. Um, yeah, the only problem you have is is the the pace of um, the drinks. You've got to be very canny, haven't you? I mean, the, the sensible ones order two drinks at a time, don't they? Why is that? Um, Why is it? You, know, you have to bring them to the table. In, in the oh, older days, it was a lot easier to to get drinks, but now we mustn't uh, linger on negatives. No, absolutely not. No, hopefully things are going the right way. Excellent. Okay, Steve, thank you very much. Anything exciting between now and when we convene next week? I just hope Lady Luck makes an appearance. I, uh, I found the last uh, last three weeks sort of crotch-curdling disappointment. You know, Brian Harmer missing out on that place uh, by a shot. Charlie Hoffman's near miss in Texas. And then, uh, you know, missing, missing that vessel in Fitzpatrick to place double. So, yeah, I'm hoping Lady Luck makes an appearance this week. Excellent. And what have we got on the show next Tuesday? Well, we're staying in the Canary Islands, as I mentioned. We've got the Tenerife uh, Open next week, um, which plays second, very much second fiddle to the Valspar Championship. Dustin Johnson said he's going to play in the Valspar Championship next week. There were signs of life from him last week, wasn't there? 13th mm. place last week. He put a new putter in the bag uh, on Sunday, uh, holds some massive putts on the 16th and 17th. He's got a new shaft and new head in his putter. So, you know, if, if, if DJ's got his putting... You know, if DJ's found a part that works, then uh, he could go well in the Vals by next week. We shall Jolly see. good. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much indeed, Steve. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you go on the YouTube feeds, let us know who you fancy. And please do join us next week for another Sweet Spot. <laughs>